What is going on, everyone? This, I know I always say this is a highly requested video, but this is really a highly requested video. And I'm gonna spend some time to educate you all on this topic. Ever since I started this new job, I've become like this coffee addict. And I wouldn't even call it like co being a coffee addict, but addict? Addict? I never really drank coffee before, and now I drink coffee at least five times a week, and that's a lot for me. Before we get into the details of the different salaries, you have to keep a couple of things in mind. One, the national average might be a lot more than the average you see for the cities you're interested in living in or the city that you currently live in. Like for example, I live in Cleveland, Ohio, so the average salary is a lot less than the average salary for the whole country. And that's because the data is skewed because of the coastal cities have a ton of the software engineering jobs and their cost of living is a lot more. So I'm gonna talk about the numbers for sure, but I want you all to understand that you have to strongly consider where you live. For example, let me move this down just a tad. The average salary for a software engineer in the Cleveland, Ohio area is $64,000. And I'm not exactly sure what that means because that's not true at all. But to give you an example, when comparing that to the national average, and it says that the average software engineering salary is 89,000. And I think they, since there's no like, I didn't put level one, two, three, four, I think that's just a starting salary. Um, but that's not, I don't think that means like that national average for all software engineers. I think it might mean like for entry level software engineers because um, 64,000 is quite low for the average in Cleveland. I'd say that's probably closer to um, an entry level job, if not a little bit more. And remember that these salaries are base salaries. The, this does not include bonuses. This does not include stock options, profit sharing, gain sharing. And those are very important factors that you should consider. Considering the fact that um, profit sharing and stock options could be up to or at least five to $10,000 on top of your salary a year. And consider if you are an hourly employee, you have the opportunity to get overtime opposed to someone who may be a salary employee who may not get any overtime. So make sure you keep that in mind. One thing I've noticed is that a lot of the entry level software developer and engineering roles are hourly, whereas the um, more senior level um, higher up level roles are salary based. Believe it or not, I have my laptop right next to me looking at these numbers because this is a really arbitrary kind of thing to talk about or even get understanding on because all these companies are so different and they offer so many different perks and options regarding, you know, overtime, for example, or, you know, profit sharing, gain sharing, signing bonuses. Um, you know, extra paid time off, all those things are really important and it's really arbitrary, especially considering the huge difference in the cost of living from some of these cities. For example, Cleveland, Ohio's average salary that I mentioned earlier for uh, base salary for a software engineer, and this isn't senior or mid-level, I guess this is probably just entry level. I digress, I said that earlier, but it's 64 grand, around 64,000, which is 27% less than the national average. And Charlotte, for example, which is a comparable city, I would say, or a comparable city, I'd say a little bit better weather though. Um, anyways, the average software engineering salary there is $72,000. So when you compare the two, the software engineering salary in Charlotte is about eight per 8,000 more. But when you compare the cost of living that's where it's like, wait a second, you may be getting paid more in Charlotte, but the when you compare the cost of living, it's pretty big. Charlotte is 36% more expensive than Cleveland, Ohio. And a lot of that is because of housing. So you really wanna consider 
where you want to move to and where you want to like you know what company you want to work for and making sure that that salary will allow you to live comfortably even if it is you know 100 grand that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be having like this hundred thousand dollar lifestyle that you would have in your hometown compared to that coastal city you're living in does that make sense okay so this stat is going to really blow you away but first i want to talk about at least what they say the average salary is based on builtnyc.com they say the average software engineering salary in new york city is 126 thousand dollars with with a around 13 thousand dollar cash bonus which puts them right at around 140 grand for total compensation but when you compare living in manhattan to cleveland the only reason why i'm doing cleveland is because that's where i live and i'm just giving you all my perspective on things to live the same way in cleveland with 50 grand you would have to be making $200,000 in Manhattan. The reason being is because Manhattan is 255% more expensive than Cleveland, Ohio, and that's obviously because the housing market is crazy there. Now, obviously, I can't make a video like this and not talk about the mecca of software engineering and development, San Francisco, Silicon Valley area. So the average software engineering salary in San Francisco is around 125 grand with a total compensation of 150 grand. And from my experience and talking with people and interviewing for jobs, I'm gonna say that that is the base salary for a entry level software engineering job. Google software engineering median salary is $138,000. Microsoft is around $125,000 and Apple is around $120,000. But of course you have to put in, of course you have to put in perspective how expensive it is. I want to say in San Francisco, the average amount of money you pay for rent a month for like 700 something square feet is north of $3,000. We talked about different salaries that software engineers and developers make in different cities. Now, I just wanna take some time to talk about some things that you should consider if you're someone in the software development or engineering world looking for a job, whether you're already working a job and wanna to move to another city or someone who is looking for a job that is a college student and you're gonna be graduating in about six months. So you wanna figure out what is important to you. Is making a ton of money your number one priority? Is family a number one priority? Is free time a number one priority? Is job security, comfortability more of a priority to you? Those are the things that you strongly want to consider. For example, there could be, you know, company A could be paying you $60,000 and you live somewhere in, I don't know, Oklahoma, Texas, maybe. And company B wants to pay you $75,000, maybe even in the same city. So most people say, yeah, take the job that's paying you $15,000 more. But what I would say is figure out what your priority is because company B may be paying you more, but you may not be able to spend a lot of time doing things that you enjoy doing outside of work, spending time with your family, and it could be a pretty stressful job. Whereas company A could have a lot of flexibility. You could work from home a lot. You could even work remotely if you want to, and the culture is great. So really consider that I personally prefer culture over pay because you're spending eight hours at a place. And if the culture isn't good, you're not gonna care about that $15,000 extra divided by 12. And then if you are being paid by weekly, you know, divide that by like two or three and then take taxes out. So it'll probably be like an extra four or $300 a paycheck, which is nice, but it isn't worth it if you feel like you're being overworked and you're just not happy. So yeah, I gotta stop saying so yeah, but that's my rant on what software engine, what? Siri just said I thought so. That's kind of funny. But that's my rant on how much money software developers and engineers make. So we talked about compensation, we talked about stocks and bonuses, which is really important. And we also talked about the, you know, city calculator the, the 
the city comparison calculator. Um, I advise everyone to do that. I was doing that. Um, some of my friends were doing that because they realized that making X amount of dollars, even though it was more in, in New York City, wasn't worth it when they could move to another city working within the same company and probably making less money, but not having to worry about paying $2,500 a month for a one bedroom apartment or a two bedroom apartment that they're sharing with someone else. And by all means, there's, I'm not trying to deter you from going to those coastal cities because I love those coastal cities. And if you get a job at a company making over six figures at a coastal city or making close to it and you're you know in your early 20s or whatever go ahead and do it or whatever age you are because you're going to make good money as a software engineer and developer i hear stories about people making 200 300 000 in some of those coastal cities so you'll be able to live you know very comfortably no matter where you live when you're making that amount of money plus just think about the opportunities those coastal cities have a lot more software engineering and tech companies to work for. So that's why the salaries are a lot more competitive and a lot of those companies are just a lot bigger and they have more money that they can shell out for good engineers. So that officially concludes this rant or whatever you wanna call it, this spiel on salaries for devs and software engineers. With that being said, that concludes this video. As always, have a blessed, rest of your week and i'll see you all soon comment down below some of your thoughts on this video or any questions that you might have share it with someone you think might benefit from it give it a thumbs up if you're here or if you like the video and i'll see you all next time and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can know right when i release a video peace